just uh, not a present hot take, but what happens if Israel gets wiped off the map? This is Burbank Faith. From the studios of the Ram Cave, in the home of the Camellias, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for September the 13th, 2024. As always, we are praying for our young people. This is episode number 309 of a ministry without parole. As always, we are praying for our young people, and uh, this is uh, today out of Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. I opened that thing today, uh, the opening at the top there, with what people would call a hot take. Uh, what would your faith be? Where would your faith be? What would you think? What would happen if Israel was destroyed? Uh, and uh, I want to read the scripture first, and then we're going to start breaking this down. It is Friday. Uh, I usually try to set this aside for Tina Delgado is alive. Uh, if I can't break down something like that, then I try to do something topical that's in the news on Friday. So Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 scripture says since then you have been raised with Christ set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God set your mind on things above not on earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Amen. Amen. That gives us hope all the way all the way home. But um, the culture our world even our government is always trying to diminish God. Let's keep God over here. Let's keep him, not just over here, but let's keep him in a box. Let's make, shrink it even st- smaller, right? And, uh, and, uh, and, and what it wants us to do is to lose hope in God. And this is intelligent evil. Intelligent evil is always trying to bring us despair. I, I do believe intelligent evil is desperate with the things it's doing these days. But it bears a great question. Um, how would you respond if the world culture government declared to you where there is no God? If you're thinking they already have, you're right. The culture, the world, the governments have all declared to you there is no God. You're right in already thinking that. They have continued to do so every day for decades and years, uh, years and decades, even centuries. But it's called intelligent evil for a reason, right? Um, we have a tendency... Uh, to laugh in their face when they tell us there's no God, right? It's like, oh, please, right? You can tell me until you're blue in the face, there is no God. Uh, Political parties can deny there is no God, and it's never going to change what we think. Uh, Through evolution and supposed science, the enemy has attempted to erode an existence of God, and the church has remained strong in the face of it. In fact, when the enemy comes at you with something regarding, uh, like, something coming from nothing, it's easy to laugh in the enemy's face. But again, intelligent evil in its desperation continues to attack and do everything to erode your faith, right? Let's try this, the Bible. What would you do if the Bible was outlawed? What would you do? Now, getting rid of all the Bibles, it's hyperbole here, I'm just using an example. Getting all the Bibles would be like trying to get rid of all the guns, right? You just couldn't do it. But uh, how would you react if they said you can't take your Bible out of your house, right? How would you react if those things, uh, would you be afraid to read your Bible? Would you not pick up your Bible? Would you just let your Bible go? Uh, you know, there's a yin and a yang there. There's, for a lot of us, it's like, that ain't going to stop me. And then for some of us, it's like, well, I don't read my Bible anyway, but I'm spiritual, right? I love the person that says, I don't believe in organized religion, but I'm spiritual, which means they don't read their Bible. And, uh, and many people today, I mean, that's one example. Uh, and what would the response be? But many people today... Uh, believe, and my, my theology kind of makes it a little bit misguided, is that Israel can't be defeated. Israel cannot be wiped out. And uh, it's all tied to into the world, eschatology, prophetic stuff. And, uh, and it's so ingrained in that, especially in our culture, you know, with the rapture, seven days of, tri- seven years of tribulation, uh, antichrist, everything. There's got to be an Israel. But what would happen, because the temple's got to be rebuilt according to this line of thought, which again is misguided in many ways. Um, but what would, what would happen to your faith if Israel was destroyed? Now, God took Israel out in 586 BC, took Israel out again in 70 AD. What makes you think he wouldn't do it again? And what would happen to your faith if Israel was destroyed? Now, I'm not advocating for Israel to be destroyed. I don't want anything bad to happen to Israel. I think Israel should defend itself. I think Israel's probably the U.S.'s only friend in the Middle East. But, um, 
and it has shown more restraint than I would have shown after October 7th because I would have taken no prisoners. I just would have flattened that whole area and and just scorched earth everything. That, that's what I would have done. I think they've shown pretty pretty good restraint. But Israel's a secular nation and more secular than Jewish, right? Um, and God has allowed them to be taken out before. So what would it do to your faith if they were taken out again? And, and again, I bring this up as hyperbole. I bring this up as, you know, something to think about is because the teachings of the church for the last, what, 150 years have been Israel's got to be there. And there's good argument in scripture that Israel doesn't have to be there, right? Israel doesn't have to be there. Uh, and, uh, and, and so if they get taken out, what does that do to your faith? And again, I hit this on, on this level is that if the enemy can erode a foundational thing that you think is foundational, right? Uh, then what do you, what are you going to do? What happens? Where's your hope in? Who have you been focused on? Have you been focused on the earthly teaching of man? Because I can tell you, there's a lot of good scholars out there that will tell you that the, the theology we believe in terms of end times is, is pretty messed up. And it's not biblical. It's more man-made. It's more Hal Lindsey. It's more Tim LaHaye than, uh, than uh, John's uh, revelation. Uh, and so what happens, what happens if your legs are taken out from under you and, and spiritually and say Israel's taken out? You know, what happens? You know, where's your faith? What are you grounded in? Right? Are you grounded in the things of man or the things of God? And that's why we go to the scripture. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and got Christ in God. And the important thing here is that you are remaining foundational in Christ. I don't care what science says, I will always believe this book more than the Bible, more than anything science says. I will always know there's a God no matter what everyone else says. And my faith is not going to be rocked if something happens in the world, like say Israel's taken out, which again, is so foundational with so many systems here in the West, uh, uh, it's not going to be taken out, it's not going to be rattled. But a lot of folks' faith would be because we're not dependent on this and we're not focused on God above, we're focused on the things around us. And that's where the enemy can take us out. And I'll put that in the micro. Your child comes out and says, um, you know, they want to live an alternative lifestyle. You know, the rainbow folk got their hands on them. Do you give up your faith? Even though you know it's contrary to the scripture, but to keep the peace, do you give up your faith? Do you give it up? Do you surrender it? Is it TBC? Is it theology by child? Is it like, you know what, I'm going to believe because... My child believe, is this now. That's what I'm going to believe. I'm going to go against what scripture says because it's what my child believes. Or are you going to take the slings and arrows? Are you going to take the punches? Are you going to take the abuse? Uh, and, uh, and, and say, no, I'm holding to the scriptures. You know, the, the lists of our young people that are declaring themselves non-binary these days, not necessarily gay, not necessarily straight, but non-binary. <laughs> that means they're not man or woman. They're just something in between uh, or something else is growing and growing thanks to the evil that's in our schools and in our culture. And uh, so what do you do when that happens, right? Is your reliance on God? Or is your reliance on, oh, I, I just gotta keep the peace? You know, Israel gets taken out. Is your reliance still on God? Or is it like, oh no, everything's gone. I, I, I don't know, I can't keep my faith. They take away the Bible. Is your reliance still on God? Or is it like, well, they took away my Bible. Uh, the enemy? is intelligent and the enemy will find your weak point and the enemy will try to erode your faith in God in everything that you believe and everything that you trust in. Be on your guard. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. May these things I talk about never happen. But I was just trying to think of what would be things that would be foundational life changers for all of us. And uh, how will our faith be in those moments? And if we're gonna change the world, if we're gonna be what God wants us to be, if we're gonna be the revolution we need to be for this culture, we need to be prepared for whatever the enemy throws at us. Amen? Amen. All right. 
Uh, good morning, Mindy May. Good morning, Mike Picard. Good morning, Kelly McCoy. Uh, I just, again, I, I bring this to you not to depress you guys. I just want you, your faith grounded in Christ. Not those who necessarily teach about Christ, but in Christ, what we read in the scriptures. And, uh, and so, so you're not rattled. Your world is not shaken when the worst happens. I, I know believers that are going to be rattled if Trump wins. They're going to be rattled if Trump wins. I know believers that are going to immediately think doom, gloom, it's the end of the world if Kamala wins, right? Um, what are we doing? Are we setting our eyes on things above or are we just looking at the things around us? I'm not asking us to have our heads buried, but we need to have our eyes open and who our eyes need to be fixed on. Amen? Amen. And our young people need that. So let's continue to pray. I'm glad we got good news there. Thanks, Mike Picard, about your Aunt Anita. Uh, we're going to continue to pray for our young people. Uh, lift up my brother Darren. Uh, Kelly McCoy, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, and uh, my brother Darren has lymphoma. Kim Dedini, brain tumor, the Ingersoll family. Uh, Kathy lost her mom, uh, Ethel. We want to be in prayer for them. Uh, Corey and Christy, uh, the loss of Christy's nephew. George Eastis in a convalescent home right now, rehab. He's been there since April. Rafi, our neighborhood boy. And of course, Tim Burns. We're praying for Tim Burns' health. We're praying for his family and his son who starts a new career. If you guys have any other requests, be sure to shoot them at me. I went a little longer today because um, kind of a touchy subject and I wanted to be careful how I phrased all that. If you have any questions, let me know if I butchered it some. Lord, we do thank you again for loving us today, God. And Lord, make us strong. Make us strong so we can laugh at the enemy when the enemy tries to take us down, when the enemy tries to erode the foundation of you. Lord, give us courage, Lord. Let us be prayed up. Let us be studied up in your word. Uh, not necessarily, Lord, so we can lot it over, over uh, people in our house or, or people in our church saying we know more than you. But, uh, but there's nothing wrong, Lord, with, with having more faith than the world has. And uh, the world is sadly lacking faith, Lord. So let us be faithful to you, Lord. Let our young people see it. Lord, we ask that you protect them today physically and spiritually as they hit the campuses, Lord. That, uh, Lord, you would go ahead of them into every classroom, uh, every lecture hall, uh, every playground. And, Lord, that you would move and that you would bless, Lord. And we think about those for us here in the United States, Lord. But we pray for those around the world, Lord. We pray for your spirit to be unleashed around the world, Lord, and that we would see revival. And that when revival happens, Lord, we won't look for another reason to justify it, Lord, but we'll say this is the power of Christ uh, moving across the lands. Uh, so, Lord, find us faithful in everything that we do. Lord, we pray for the needs on our board here. Lord, we continue to pray for Mike McCart's aunt Anita, Tim Burns' health, Rafi, uh, George Eastis, Corey and Christy. Uh, Cindy is a woman who's facing brain surgery very soon. We pray for the Ingersoll household, Kim Dedini, my brother Darren, uh, and so many others. Lord, we just uh, thank you for loving us and the hope that we find in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Good morning, Dee Dee. All right. Got some folks here that we haven't seen for a while. Thank you guys for being here. Please do hit the like button, uh, the share button if you can, and feel free because I, I touched on, on, on some touchy things today, um, but um, felt the need to get those things out there. Don't fall into despair when the world tries to erode the foundations of your faith. All right? Keep going forward. Amen? Amen. All right. We will see you soon. Uh, we'll be back Monday. God bless. Take care. Bye.